Well, it's a joy to have Dr. David Murray uh, on the podcast today. Uh, Dr. Murray is the professor of Old Testament and practical theology at Puritan Reformed Theological Seminary. He's pastored three churches in the UK and USA over the past 23 years and has been teaching uh, at PRTS since 2007. I've gotten to know him as the author of a number of books, including Christian Christians Get Depressed Too, Jesus on Every Page, Reset, and Exploring the Bible. I started, actually, David, uh, got to know you through your blog, Head, Heart, Hands, uh, a long, uh, a while ago. He's married to Shona, and they have five children, ages 7 to 24. So welcome to the podcast, and thanks for taking the time. Thank you, chap. And you missed a really important line in that bio. I am a big, big fan of the disciple-making parent. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, well, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Well, you uh, the reason I ask you back is uh, you have just recently released uh, two, two resources to get us back into the Word. And so we're going to be talking about, first here, exploring the Bible together. Uh, a 52-week family worship plan. So talk, tell me a little bit about why you wrote that. Yes, well, a couple of years ago, Crossway and I published Exploring the Bible, a Bible reading plan for kids. And that was, that's been pretty popular. And we wanted to try and involve the parents a bit more in that. Quite a lot of parents would walk their children through it. And we also wanted to provide a resource for people wanting to start family worship. And so we thought, well, why can't we combine that? The kids could be doing Exploring the Bible and then family worship with the same passages each day would both involve the parents in Exploring the Bible and seal the, the lessons that the kids were getting in Exploring the Bible as well as give parents a, a very simple, doable family worship plan. Because all the feedback I've had regarding family worship is, I think, you know, the vast majority of parents would love to do this. But what to do, how to do it, how long to do it. And then people start, they don't really have a system, they often try way too much and it just becomes impractical in a busy family and whose family is not busy today. So this was really an attempt to give people a structure, a pattern, so that it can become a habit and it can be done in, yeah, under five minutes a day. So hopefully it will bring parents and kids together around the word and in the word and in worship, which is really the aim of the word. It's to bring us to worship God together. So to be clear, this syncs with the, uh, the other, the other individual study that you, uh, yes, the that you released. Too. Yeah. So the readings for each day are the same, but exploring the Bible together has a few additional items. It's got two questions each day, one of which is for very young kids and mainly content questions. So, you know, what was the man's name in this passage or something like that? Yeah, and yeah. Then slightly older, so a wee bit more thoughtful application of the word, maybe. And then there's a one line summary lesson from that five or six verses and a suggestion for prayer. And again, it's not, to, it's not to take away from people's ability to pray themselves, but just to give them an idea so that prayers are fresh and different each day. And hopefully it gets the kids into this whole idea of, you don't just read the Bible and walk away, but you relate your Bible to your praying and you try and think of what, what prayer does this passage provoke? And, and for myself, that's really the way I keep my own prayers fresh and varied and wide by letting my daily Bible reading guide them. Well, that, there's so much in those, those two comments. So, uh, so uh -huh. yeah, let's talk about, so it, really at, that, at the end there, you're talking about praying the Bible, which yeah. it, it's so many Christians and it's easy to 
uh, fall into if you if you have a list, which which I think is helpful, then then it's easy to okay, Lord, I'm telling you how to run the universe, and uh, and and then here the here's my wish list, right. and that that can get that can get old and um, and obviously self oriented, and yet praying back God's word to Him, uh, or praying a request, or praising Him, or um, uh, rejoicing in some truth really honors the Lord and honors the word. Yeah. And family worship is a great place to learn how to pray in public as well. A lot of people, they're fine with praying in private, but ask them to pray in public, very hard thing to do. I totally sympathize with that. But in a safe environment of family worship, it's not really public. And, and just giving ideas to people to, to start them off. And what, what I encourage as well in family worship is for the parent or parents leading it to ask their kids for prayers as well. You know, what would you like dad or mom to pray for? And again, that just builds this into, it's just a part of daily life. It's just, it's very natural. It's very normal. We, we take big things, we take small things to the Lord and, um, we, we gather together as a family, we share our cares, our concerns, our hopes, our dreams. And it's, it's, it's a very good training ground for learning how to pray in more public areas in a way that hopefully takes some of the fear factor out of it. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, that's, we could talk about that, but so just, you, just this idea, but what I love about what, what you're doing here is you're, you're making it, simple and and it, very simple so two questions a simple one for the younger uh a question a little slightly deeper but still not difficult um the the theme one a uh, one sentence of the theme and then a and then a way to pray you know one of the things that i've i've said about family worship family devotions is it it it's you know it's almost the holy grail if you're doing it you're a great christian family if you're not but it's something that keep it simple, keep it simple, keep it short and keep starting. I think that's the other thing. You know, if you, if you, if you miss a meal, you don't say, well, that's it. I'm never eating again because you know, right. I, I skipped a meal. Well, well, things are going to come up and, and we're going to have to rush through things. But, but what I love about this is it's very simple. And then to your point, even, even, and especially sometimes men who feel self-conscious, you know, it, it, I mean, you could you could repeat these words if a, yeah. if a man right. is willing to man up. You know, yeah. he could say, "God, please yeah. help us to treat sin with yeah. with horror and not humor." Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you, can that. you can do that. You can do you can do that, man. It's a small prayer. Yeah, it's a huge prayer. And yeah, to to your point about missing a meal and then you you know you eat the next day. Our mutual friend Tim Challies has been a big encourager to just both, but to me in this whole project of trying to connect the word with kids. And one of the things he impressed on me was to leave a free day every week. So there's no reading on a Sunday, for example. What I encourage people to do is read the passage they heard in church. And then I give some questions that can be asked of every sermon that's preached. And, but that also gives just a little bit of margin for that busy Friday, busy Saturday, where people can catch up and they don't feel guilty. Um, I mean, maybe I just opened the book there. Here's just a quick example of maybe it would help people grasp. So I've opened it Thursday, Ex Expedition 12. So try and portray this whole book as, as 52 expeditions through the Bible. And Expedition 12 is a special promise of a special king. And there's a little introduction just to give context to 2 Samuel 7. And then see on Thursday, we're reading 2 Samuel 12, verses 1 through 6, and it's entitled, Nathan Illustrates David's Sin. So the father would just say, let's read this. Uh, this is entitled, David, uh, Nathan Illustrates David's Sin. I said father, it could be a mother, of course. Yep. And then there are these two simple questions. Number one, for younger kids, in what way is David like the rich man in Nathan's story? And I put verse four beside that so that the kids know where to look. 
And I give the answer, he stole another man's wife when he already had one himself. And then slightly harder question, what does David's response to Nathan's story teach us? So it's asking him to draw a conclusion, do a little bit of analysis, and it says we can be outraged and angry at other sins, but ignore or excuse our own. And then the, the takeaway lesson, we can be blind to our worst sins, but be very critical of them when we see them in others. And the prayer, thank God for faithful pastors who show us our sins and pray that we will be more angry with our sins than with other sins. So I hope that just gives a, a flavor of how simple, I mean, what, that, that would take you, what, three or four minutes or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, yeah, that's, that's great. Um, uh, and I, I, as I was looking through it, I loved, you even give us the answer. So, <laughs> you know, like, oh, good. I've been teaching it's, students for too long. <laughs> it's the teacher's guide with the answers uh, in there. Yeah, so I just think this is, this is, this is crucial. Um, you know, if you, if, 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 and I was guilty of having too high of expectations and, you know, the kids say, you know, you're boring and, and then listen to myself and well, actually I am boring, you know? Uh, yeah. And so this is, this is perfect in the sense that uh, asking questions and, uh, and having the answers right there. So, and you, so yeah, you think, yeah, it'll take, five, four or five minutes each time? And I mean, obviously sometimes you hope that there'll be a longer discussion. It'll provoke questions and it'll provoke um, challenge. And, um, uh, you know, these are the best times of family worship, aren't they? When it just opens up into a really serious, heartfelt um, seeking of the Lord and how to apply his word to our, our lives. Now that doesn't happen every day. Sometimes it doesn't happen for many weeks, but when it does, it's, it's such a blessing. I think that what, what you just said again is so important because um, I, I, I'm a football guy and, and I just compared it. If, if you know, you're running play, running play, running play, and every so often one breaks loose. And so the idea is if, if I'm consistent and if I lower my expectations to four or five minutes, can, and so this is something that's doable, and we just do this, like you talked about, and it's four or five minutes, then sometimes we have to quickly leave, or sometimes everybody's like, yeah, okay, that's great. But there are those times, and they're, all, they're just, they're Holy Spirit moments where someone will ask a question, and you, somebody else will chime in, and, and it's just, much yeah. deeper and you feel like you've been given a window into their heart and yep. you're just having a very natural discussion. That's right. And, and you hope that that habit will make it easier for parents and kids to just talk about the Bible together outside of family worship time. And that it just becomes a more natural part of life that just as you talk about football or the weather or your yard, that you talk about how God's word interacts with every aspect of our lives. So mm. uh, my own, you know, over 30 years of being a Christian, I've, I've realized that the way forward in the Christian life, the way to growth, is not through extraordinary acts, but ordinary, regular habits that you, you've got to watch they don't become routine and mechanical, but as long as you keep praying and, and seek the Lord, yeah, there can be these beautiful moments of blossoming and flowering and fruit that you wouldn't actually get usually if you didn't just go through the daily habit. Hmm. Yeah, that's good. That's really good. Well, we, we in your, just as a final encouragement here, uh, in your beginning, talk just hopefully we've laid out how easy it is but talk about some of the benefits you've the, in your uh, introduction the importance of family worship there just uh give us give us kind of a charge there to say yes you can you can do it and and actually this perfect time this is time you know with the uh, with the pandemic we're we're at home um, I know. I know. yeah so, yeah give us kind of a charge there i mean i, I 
there's no explicit command in scripture to have family worship as I've outlined it there, but I think it's implied in parental responsibilities that we disciple our children with the word. And this is just one way that we can make that more regular. So I think you're obeying an implicit command of scripture, which always brings a blessing. I think also it, it brings your family together. Uh, you know, it's so hard at times to actually get together as a family, even for a meal. Um, but to come together in worship has got to be good for everyone. It's got to be good for the unity of the family. I think it also changes our worldview. So, you know, we take in so much through our eyes and our ears and all our senses every day through the media, education. And this is just an opportunity to take a divine view of things, to, to get above the, the noise and the smoke and get some clarity, get some perspective, put things in scale, which usually means shrinking big things down quite a bit and, and often making small things bigger. And I think it also leaves an indelible impression that, you know, when, you, when I... So we didn't have family worship in my home growing up for the first, I would say, 10 years. And I think I was probably 11. I'm guessing 11 when my father and mother started it. I don't forget it. So, you know, if, you've, if you haven't done it and your kids are getting older, it, you've, you, the cause is not lost. You know, the, the memories will still be there and the blessing will still be there. And, and I, I really believe that, that God blesses this in a, in a, not as much as the preaching of the word, but in a very special way, I, I believe he blesses family discipleship like this. I think that's great. Just even as you mentioned, I, I, I'm personally burdened that with, the, with so much noise, it lowers our view of the Bible. Our Bible just becomes one more book. So if we're, if we're um, living 500 years ago, you know, 300 years ago, books are very uh, much more rare. And to actually own, if I if I if I have one book, what should I have? Well, I'm going to have a Bible, and that's going to fill my mind. As opposed to now, I have I have this 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 book, but I also have Facebook and all these other words that are coming at me, and it just sort of waters down yeah. waters yeah. down the word. Yeah. What, what kind of um, how what, what advice how would you advise a a mom who has either uh, a church going but but passive husband um mm. or an unbelieving husband what what encouragement would you give her right yeah right there these are two quite different situations so a, a passive christian husband it, it, it's sort of an oxymoron it shouldn't be um so I think a book like this could actually encourage a man like that because a lot of men are passive out of fear or they just feel they don't have the ability. It's not that they don't have desire. And therefore, you know, to give them a resource where they don't need ability really, it's, it's, it's laid out for them. It's all on a plate. I think could hopefully encourage them. Um, now, an unbelieving husband, obviously, if it's a believing wife, I would much rather she would lead the family worship, obviously. Um, but, I mean, I've known situations where a, a wife's faithful leading of her family in Bible reading and prayer has, has been blessed to her, her unbelieving husband. And it's been a, a real rebuke to him. It's one thing to avoid church every week, but, you know, to actually be... Um, not involved in this daily family activity, which is a priority, then that, that's very, I would say that's convicting to a lot of yeah. men. Yeah. So, so would, you, would you say you can do this when the family is gathered? Or would you say, so you're talking about that convicts the husband or just even off if it's like the mom sitting on the sofa uh, with, with two or the children? Uh, that's right. I mean, I've known men who would walk out of the, their family room if the wife started talking about the Bible or teaching the kids the Bible. And yet that itself has ultimately led them to deep conviction that they you know, couldn't even bear the, the thought of being in the presence of the Bible being read. And so I think just be faithful, be wise, be patient. 
and yeah, just ask God to even just use this to bring that passive husband to activity or that unbelieving husband to faith. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's good. That's really, that's really good. I was going to ask you one other question, but I can't remember it. So let's, let's, let, maybe we'll come back to it. Uh, um, let's talk about meeting Jesus. So you, you've been very proficient. I got, I uh, was offered and, and took up, took crossway up on these quickly. Um, but meeting Jesus is similar to exploring, exploring the Bible, except uh, it's, it's through the life of Jesus. So here we have kind of a comprehensive uh, guide using uh, mostly Luke, right? With the yep. idea that Luke is chronological um, yep. and then adding in other, other, uh, other scriptures to help fill out the life of Jesus. Talk, just talk a little bit sure. um, about why you did meeting with Jesus and well exploring the Bible for kids takes people takes them through the whole Bible over 52 weeks obviously they don't read every verse in the Bible but try to pick the peaks of redemptive history so that they will get the big picture of the coming of the king and the kingdom over these 52 weeks it goes from genesis to revelation now, obviously you have to leave out some important passages but um I, I hope it gives that big picture that's often very lacking but we had people saying hey we've done our kids have done a year of this they've really loved it in a good habit have you got another like what's number two and so we thought it'd be a good idea to just zoom in on the life of jesus so you, you get the big picture and then, okay, we've covered, you know, elements of Christ's life and death and resurrection in exploring the Bible. But let's now just give 52 weeks of just focused on this glorious, beautiful Savior. And so, yeah, we, we mainly use Luke and supplement, say, with Sermon on the Mount and some of the other parts and some of the other Gospels, which are, you know, helpful to kids. We try to keep that in view the upper um, room discourse some of the from right. john yeah yeah that's right yeah and some of the beautiful parables and the so yeah i would say probably 80 to 85 percent is luke and then the rest is supplemented from the other gospels and hopefully it again just gives people that gives kids that big picture view of that narrower part of scripture and by the end of two volumes of that, you know, you're hoping that the appetite will be there, the habit will be there, and you've given them the tools to go on and, and do their own Bible reading in, you know, shorter segments and trying to apply the same principles. And, and obviously, our, our ultimate hope is that they meet with Jesus. Right, that, right. And, and that's, I think that's the great joy, isn't it, of when we write books that you just hope and pray that this will be the means of people coming face to face with Christ and loving him and trusting in him and following him for the rest of their lives. I think that's really, uh, it's, it's really helpful. Um, and I wonder, so, so the, the, the aim of this is six to 12 year old. Is that right? That, that's yeah, the... I mean, a six year old could do it. We're, we've been talking about this ourselves, my wife and I, because we have a six just turned seven year old and we're going to start them off. But we fail, I think we'll leave it another year um, because you want your kids to, not just to do it, but to profit from it. Yeah. And so, you, and you don't want to, as it were, waste it. So they do it, but you know, it's just a doing of it. So we're, we're going to wait a little bit. So I think it really depends on your kids' ages. The strange thing is I've had adults who have gone through exploring the Bible. In fact, I had an engaged couple who went through it in their engagement year. And uh, so it, and I'd, I had somebody go through it who just found the Lord, no Christian background, but, but found it just a helpful book to give them a, an introduction to the Bible. So, yeah, it's mainly for kids, but you just never know who's going to pick it up and use it in a different way. Well, yeah, that's, I mean, that's one of my arguments in the Disciple Making Parent is uh, part of our purpose in teaching others is to learn it ourselves. And so we, you, you get a chance to say, 
oh, you know what? Actually, I'm not real clear on how some parts of the Bible uh, fit together. And uh, so this is going to give me a chance. Or the same with the, with the life of Christ. You hear different parts of Sunday school or a uh, sermon or whatever, but to actually say, okay, oh, I can just kind of fan through the book and, yeah. you know, and it, I'm able to, uh, able to put it together. Do you have a, do you have plans for a meeting with Jesus together, uh, version? Well, or, we, we did talk about it, but it, we, we decided to wait and see how this one went, first of all. And if it goes well, then yeah, we'll probably do a meeting with Jesus family worship plan as well. I mean, it's, it's really, chap, a, a lot of my inspiration for these books really comes from yourself. Uh, you know, I, I really caught the vision of viewing parenting as disciple making through your own ministry, through your own books. And I think it's a, I think it's just a beautiful way to frame our parenting. Mm -hmm. And it moves it away from being just a, I don't know, getting them ready for education or work, moving it away from just being discipline, you know, discipling. It's, it's just so much richer than disciplining. And, and it, it helps us to keep that positive aspect, the nurture, the edification, the feeding. And I think, I'm sure you've seen it too, chap. You, you fear today at times that that side of parenting is, is not done there's maybe a lot of disciplining, but without that positive nurturing, that discipling, the disciplining is not going to have any long-term effect on the heart at least. Yeah. So, yeah, I just, it's a, it's a, it's a way of, I suppose you could say it's an application of the disciple-making parent. Oh, well, well, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. But that, yeah, I think we, we have the privilege of teaching them and, and, you know, as, as a pastor, as a professor, the teacher always learns more. So after you've listened, yeah. as, a, as a pastor, you don't want to say, you know, if you want to be humbled, all you have to do is ask people, uh, what was the sermon on last Sunday? And, and they're like, uh, I can't remember. It was good, but I can't remember. I so I so the, teach, the teacher is always learning more. So that just the fact that you're articulating this to your children, asking questions, uh, yeah, you're you're gonna you're gonna learn more. So I'm learn a lot. Yeah, I mean, I, I've lost count of the number of sermons I've I've found in family worship. You know, if I'm if I'm going through a series or 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 just picking verses here and there, and then you read family worship, you do your reading, and then a like, discussion starts, and boom, the the word just opens up, and you know, I've got to preach on that. That's just wonderful. So. Yeah, there's, there's a great gain for the parents as well. And having to simplify something for kids is a great way to learn and, and really test, do I know what I'm talking about here? Well, that's, and that it surprises me. Uh, that, is, that is such a needed skill of summarizing and simplifying. So what, what exactly am I trying to say uh, to, to this, this child? So for, so for a church leader, you know, it's, it's very, it's, it's a needed skill for everybody. It's a needed skill, but then especially a, a church leader. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, this has been a great conversation and uh, I, I would highly recommend uh, these resources, exploring the Bible, uh, the, the uh, individual version, and now exploring the Bible together. And I agree a hundred percent, just, just the makeup. It's just very simple. Uh, it's going to give you a chance to, to open the word together and then meeting with Jesus. Uh, likewise, it's, it's the same thing, just focusing on our savior. So David, thank you so much for taking the time and uh, for producing these resources and tell me what's next. You, you were telling me right before we hit the record button, but Lord willing. Yes. So I am uh, hoping a couple of books come out in the summer with Crossway. I think it's July on teen depression and anxiety. The one for teens is called, Why Am I Feeling Like This? And the one for, for parents is, Why Is My Teenager Feeling Like This? So obviously, as you know, chap, the, the rates of depression and anxiety for teens is just horrifying. And it's got, it's, it's got at least doubly bad through this pandemic. The, 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 
Number of phone calls to helplines is just going through the roof. And we need to provide some help from a biblical perspective. And so something for the kids, but we need, just like we've been talking here about the Bible, we need parents involved. It's, you can't just hand your kids over to counsellors. Parents are there more, much more. And, and therefore, it was just an attempt, again, the chapters overlap in, in their headings and their chapter titles, but not in the content. You know, so that each is tailored, what the kids need to do, how the parents can help them. And just getting parental understanding can be a huge healing for, for a lot of the teens who just don't feel understood or helped. So hoping that, yeah, I obviously when these books were written, I never realized that the pandemic would come along and make these books all the more relevant. So hopefully the Lord's timing will, will work out well and some of these kids and parents who are suffering a lot with this will, will be able to help help towards joy and peace in the gospel. Well, that's great. I'm looking forward to that. We, we, we had an experience in our family, and I would consider myself uh, a pretty involved, in-touch uh, parent. And, and later, one child told me, yeah, that, I, was going, I think I was depressed during that time. And I was, uh, I was just totally, totally yeah. shocked. So, well, thank you so much for uh, your time and uh, uh, hanging out with us. And, and I hope that these uh, resources will bless uh, many families. Thank you, Chaps. It's a pleasure.